<laughs> All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the beauty of brushwork, painting clouds, trees, and water. And today, first class, we are going to be focusing on clouds. I think it's the uh, most forgiving of the three subjects, and it allows us to really work on a diversity of brush strokes, um, thick paint, thin paint, uh, firm pressure. And that's going to be a big word for today is pressure. We're really going to be working on uh, creating a variety of brush strokes through the amount of pressure or weight that we're putting on the brush and how we lift the brush at the end or, you know, we can change the pressure throughout the brush stroke. Uh, really amazing tools. The great thing about um, clouds, too, is we can get a real diversity of edge quality. So, you know, some clouds are very crisp and nearly hard. Hi, Barbara. Um, and uh, some clouds are very wispy and really soft edge. You can almost not tell where the cloud begins in the sky, you know, starts where the cloud starts. Um, and so excited about that. But first, I would like to um, apologize a little bit to everybody. We uh, had a bit of a communication issue, or I guess the Oregon Society of Artists was being very, very helpful. And um, we ended up recycling the Zoom link from last class. Um, so th that went out to probably more people than it should have, which is fine. I welcome you to please tune in today, um, see if it's something that might be interesting for you and uh, join us. Um, I apologize about that. But next week, do look for, I will be, uh, just so I'm not bothering everybody from last class that's not signed up. Um, I will be sending a new Zoom link, um, so be on the lookout for that, and uh, so I'll create a new, that that we'll use every week. Great. All right, so it's kind of funny. I've never had a class back-to-back -back like this, where we literally had no time off between uh, the two, uh, the blowing color class and now the painting uh, trees, clouds, and water, and uh, it's kind of exciting in a way because I'm not <laughs> I have it cooled down. I'm ready to keep painting. Uh, I don't need the warm up time, and hopefully you guys are feeling the same way. Just kind of jumping right back into it. I'm going to jump over to our Padlet, and for those of you who may be n newer or took a little break from classes and have not seen the Padlet, it is what I use instead of the um, Google. I mean, uh, Facebook groups, and we, I think it's pretty much unanimous that it's much easier, much easier to find things, and uh, we don't have to sign up for Facebook, which is always nice. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share screen and pop over to our Padlet page. So I went ahead and added everybody's names on the, if you kind of scroll to the right, you'll see everybody's names, I hope. If you don't see your name, please add it. Oh, and it's really simple. You just go to the very far end right. Can you guys see out my window how much snow there is? It is really, really coming down. Huge flakes. Wasn't expecting that. I think um, anyways. I'm just, I'm just seeing the Padlet right now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'll show you after you stop the Padlet. Thanks. Um, anyways, the add section, you would just click that and just add your name. And you can, if you'd like to, put it in alphabetical order. That makes it a little bit easier for me. So you're just going to touch on it and drag it across. So Michelle, and then it would be Michael, because Michael Orwick. Um, and uh, then from there, when you want to add any of your pictures, you would just come up. You click the plus sign underneath there, touch there, and let's just add a real quick. I would just find my image and double click it, and there we go. Picture I took in Laos, um, publish, and there it is. And the cool thing is, is I can actually even like, oh nope, that's ex that was actually Sandy's or Phyllis's, or I can even change the order. It's really an easy drag and drop system, very forgiving. 
So feel free to kind of get in there, play around a little bit. If you accidentally add the wrong picture or whatever else, just go to the three dots and delete it. And it's just that easy. If you accidentally misspell your name, you can rename the section. Or whatever. Delete it. There we go. So within our Padlet, hey, this was, yep. Uh, I just, quick question on the naming thing. When we post things uh, under our name, uh, it doesn't come up with our name. It comes up with anonymous. Is there okay. any way to fix that? Yes, there is. I have had a difficult time trying to comprehend it because I don't see it from your guys' point of view. Um, mm. here, yeah, solely your posting is anonymous. Yeah, so that's what happens. So it doesn't have to. So, uh, Julie, are you on here? Yeah, I'm here. I'm so kind how of... did you give yourself a name here? Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, there is a way though that you can <laughs> maybe just push like all the buttons. Uh, <laughs> I'll use, like maybe on the yeah. side. Okay. I think, or maybe like uh, maybe that one. I don't know. You probably can't see my cursor. Oh the, no, sorry, I can't. Uh, yeah. No, along the side, or you know, uh, the far right hand side kind of in the margin there's some different choices you can make along there i think one of those might allow you to register oh over here I'm yes here. yes, yes. Far right. so very far right i don't remember which button but uh so something over there okay maybe I bet it, you it's open padlet settings yes but i think that's it but i'm not positive but it's one of those for sure okay yeah that just like my kids do just just keep pressing buttons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does seem pretty indestructible. It's actually a lot of um, teachers are using it for, you know, their young students and stuff. And, um, you know, I imagine those kids are not scared at all. And they get in there and uh, really mess around with stuff. So, yeah, I would imagine that it's on the right side. And one of the last two buttons here, you've got the settings here, mm -hmm. the very bottom one. And then you have the three dots. And a bunch of stuff pops up there as well, but that may be more for me because it looks like I could actually delete the whole Padlet if I wanted to. So maybe don't push all those okay. buttons if you don't have that. put all those. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, let's quickly go over our Padlet. So Padlet um, it works really simply in that it's just the title of the category, I guess, and then they go directly beneath it. So if I want to, when I am finished with these this class and uh, upload the recording to YouTube, I will then post a link to that video under here, class recordings on YouTube, and I'll fix the big O, and I would just add it here and drop it, and then you guys would be able to visit it and watch it at any point. Like, here's actually, why did that happen? <laughs> I don't know what that was. That was interesting. All right. So you should be able to just touch that. Yeah. So you can watch it and just blow it up there. Or you can go to the YouTube by just clicking the YouTube in the bottom right corner. And uh, so anyways, all class recordings will be here in the future. I will also try to email you the links. So you'll get them twice, hopefully. At the, by the end of Wednesday, sometimes it does take a little bit longer. Um, after that, we've got class handouts, uh, some reading for you if you'd like. Um, these two kind of go together about the different colors of the sky. Um, this is about the angles of light and the sky. Uh, a supply list for anybody that would like that. Um, this is something I use quite a bit with students and talk about. Um, from time to time. And this is a really great way for you to check in with yourself before you paint and you start your painting, midway through your painting, and even at the end of your painting. And just kind of, it's kind of a, you know, fill in the little sections here. And then underneath that is kind of a little descriptors of kind of different ideas and views. And then at the very last page is basically my order of working. 
when I'm being good, <laughs> um, when I'm being successful, or this improves my odds of success a lot, is to follow these steps. Um, they're not going to be the same for everybody, but I do find that for me, this is really useful. Um, so if, if you're ever struggling, you can refer to that. Um, also have uh, Edgar Payne, Edgar Allen Payne, um, his little design cheat sheet here, which is really useful and a great tool, especially when we get into trees and rocks here. Um, so you can look at that. We will talk about that more. A little handout on just trees, atmosphere, value charts. Anyways, we'll go into some of these, but I just want to show you what was there. My split, uh, split primary palette that I like to use. Um, then we've got online links, which supposedly is the Zoom link. I'm not positive if it worked from there. Did anybody come in through the Zoom link today? All right, great job, Phyllis. Uh, yeah. Perfect. All right, great, so that worked. Um, and then I've got the time zone converter. So just in case uh, anybody's you know, East Coast or from a uh, different country or whatever, you can check in using that to uh, see when you should actually be joining us. Photo references. This is probably one of the most used areas. Um, feel free um, to share photos if you would like. If you'd like to share your photo references with other people, meaning that they could also use them and paint from them, add them to the photo, the reference photo section. Same thing again, you just push the plus button, add them to your thing and push publish. I added a bunch um, because we're talking about clouds. I added a whole lot of different cloud imagery. Um, these are all photos that I've taken. So they are, you know, copyright, well, not copyright free, but you guys are free to use them. And uh, we're going to be looking at these a little bit closer here in just a minute um, to be discussing all the different types of clouds. So My anyways, you can see, I kind of went crazy. <laughs> I added so many, some are water, some are trees, uh, some are water trees and rocks. Um, Michael, can from, I ask uh, a, a question. Um, on your reference photos, I was trying during our one week break to download one of the reference photos so that I could paint it. Um, and I, I really couldn't do it. I couldn't figure out how to do it. Yes, that is true. And when we first started on Padlet, it seemed like there was a little thing to the bottom here that seems to have disappeared. Can you scroll down on that or you? Yeah. So it looks like um, over to download the attachment. far right solely, there's a little bit of um, options again. And here is a download attachment. I'm not sure. Let's see if that does that. Desktop. I don't know. Yes. Okay. So the other so thing, it is, it's this download attachments. Okay. So the oh, three dots right. to the right. So that was a great question. So I did notice that the that it used to be down here in the bottom of the picture, and it moved. Okay. Did you even mm -hmm. take and make my picture, one of my photos or whatever photo, into a desktop. It looks like. So great. Good question. All right. Thanks. So yeah, some of these pictures are pretty, like this is from Spain. That one was also from Laos, mm -hmm. um, the craziest water and waterfall I've ever seen. Um, Spain, uh, this one's Oregon here. But anyway, it's just a lot, a lot of different references that pertain to um, some of what we are going to be covering. So again, if you have really great uh, pictures of, you know, of water or rocks or clouds that you would like to share, please do. I think it makes for a nice uh, community involvement and it just expands our library of possibilities here. So very cool. But anyways, <laughs> so many, even a horse. But I really like this photo. <laughs> I like that photo. Horse. That's Isn't that a cool? cool? Yeah. yeah. This weird yeah, cloud, lovely. but um, yeah, Norwegian fjord horse, pretty crazy. How did you get to the download link, Michael? 
Okay, so let's pretend you're in love with this bright pink square format uh, clouds. Um, you're going to go so all the way to the right side. Okay. And those three dots, and uh, it is going to be download attachment. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, that was really good questions. I'm glad you guys asked that because I actually was floundering around with that a little bit too and even ended up doing just a, a screen capture to reuse one of the images. So that'll be great when I want to take your guys' pictures and put them into Photoshop. Um, yeah, so all sorts of different stuff there. Uh, painting examples is the next one we have over here on the Padlet. And I was just trying to find a bunch of uh, artists who I respect and like and look up to or studied and um, examples of their work, either pertaining to clouds, trees, or water. Um, so you can, we'll probably go over some of that next class. Um, but anyways, if you also have some uh, artists that you really like, uh, like I just love like this, I wish they had a zoom on here. Um, nope, but uh, I love the different textures he has. He uses a really smooth, like he's used a palette knife to do all these different textures. You'll have to pull that up so you can see it. Um, but uh, lots of lots and lots of different uh, examples of famous artists and their ways of uh, painting the sky or painting the water or painting rocks, painting trees. And this one's not going to load. So got that, a um, couple of paintings of my own. Um, when we get to the trees, rocks, and water, I was curious if you guys would like to paint from one of my paintings, which I don't think we've ever done. We always just paint from photos, but if we will, we'll have a couple of weeks to decide, so you don't have to you know, decide just yet. But if that's something that might be interesting, um, I wouldn't mind doing a paint along with uh, of that one, um, just because it's a painting that I really liked doing. It's a uh, palette knife. So it's a good opportunity to expand our brush making or mark making capabilities using a couple different tools. It's a combination of brushes and palette knife, um, which is something I don't do, which is something that scares me to demo palette knife because I don't really paint with a palette knife, but I really had a great time doing this one. So <laughs> uh, anyways, a couple of paintings of mine, just so you can see examples of some work. Um, all right, so Barbara jumping right in there and uh, posting a picture and uh, yeah. beautiful picture. Yeah, I want, I want, I want to do that one. <laughs> yeah, I want to make it look just like that. You want to do it just like that? I want to make it look just like that. You think right. We can do it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It even has a rainbow. I know. I saw that little rainbow. Oh, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I almost put in a picture that I took in um, Maui uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's kind of a similar with the rainbow and everything. It's very, yeah, they sure get beautiful skies out there. Um, yeah, you can totally do that. The only thing as far as design and composition wise is the showing just the roofs can be a little bit awkward sometimes. Um, but it also, Yeah, I would take a minute. Okay. So I was wondering is, yeah, a couple of trees. I think I would just take them out. Yeah, I think, okay, great. Yeah, definitely. I think this will work out really well. For this week, uh, my intention is to paint um, blue skies, white clouds, just kind of showing form and structure, but you're totally, you guys are always, always, always welcome to paint whatever you want. Um, but I'm going to be doing blue skies this week. And then next week I had the uh, idea that I would do, um, some uh, sunset image or two, something like this one I was thinking. Um, I've got another one. I think the one I sent in the email last night. Mm -hmm. Where is one. it? Towards the top somewhere. Um, oh, that was from Maui, I think. Um, da, 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 sorry, posted too many. And that one a bunch of times. This is the one I was thinking I would do today because I really like the design and structure and movement in this one. What do you guys think of that? 
It's really pretty. Well, yeah, that's lovely. Collection too. Right. Yeah. That. Yeah. So this one will get a little bit of trees and water as well, but it, we're going to focus on the clouds. It'll be a uh, smaller, faster painting for me. Um, and if we have time, I may do two quick paintings, which uh, we'll see. But I just wanted to really work on the uh, structure and uh, design of the clouds in this one. Oh, I see why it take it keeps going to the bottom. This is the other one I was thinking about doing today. Um, and this one's a little more facelit. Um, if you guys have been students of mine very often or very long, you know that I love backlit items. So uh, sometimes I got to force myself to uh, not do backlit. Wow, it really wants to go to the bottom of all those. Mm. Well, anyways, not too important. This is another one I really like. And I actually think I've painted in one of my classes before as a little demo. This is from Italy in Tuscany. Ooh. Um, Luca, the town of Luca, the walled city, is down there in the valley somewhere. <laughs> Can't see it, but so crazy. All right. Great. Um, does that make sense to everybody, what we've got going on there? Everybody's <laughs> comfortable? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. All right. What I want to do now is I'm going to pull up a whole bunch of of I actually went through 12 years of photos yesterday looking for all my cloud or a bunch of cloud photos. So I uh, I did find a bunch. And uh, so I'm going to bring those over here. All right, does everybody see the farm scene that I was just showing you with the big clouds? So again, this is the painting I'm contemplating doing today. And this is nice because we can zoom in too, great. Um, and my hope is that we will just be able to do kind of like a quick slideshow. What I want you guys to be thinking about as we're looking through these photos is, I should ask you, what is the first thing I'm gonna ask you? Uh, when I come around, if I were, if we were in person and I were uh, peeking over your shoulder at your painting, what's a, one of the very first things I'm going to ask you, Karen? Well, or go ahead. Anybody? You're gonna you're gonna paint the paint the darks first. Is that well, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what what? <laughs> but what would I ask of your scene generally? Where does the light your, come from? Where is the light? Yeah. yeah. Where is your light source? Yeah, that's yeah. right. That, that, yeah. <laughs> where is your light the source? The one thing that you pointed. I'm not picking yeah, on you at all. That you're just the name at the uh, on the bottom here that I saw. No, first. well that it it that's what you had. Uh, that was my whole uh, problem, though. <laughs> but you <laughs> are not and alone. I, and I forgot <laughs> already. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> But that's it, right? We all are working on the same thing over and over. And it would be awesome if I could just say it one time to you, or I could read a book, an art book one time, and all of a sudden learn all the information. It just, for some reason, it doesn't work like that. It, 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 there is repetition. There is the fact that we need to, you know, learn, hear it, practice it, share it, and then it kind of sinks in, but it really is in the repetition of uh, the knowledge. So anyways, yes, when we're looking at this, where is the light source, okay? Oftentimes we can kind of squint our eyes and that helps to simplify the values. What it does is takes away a lot of the extraneous detail, kind of merges like values, meaning the lights and the darks. So when you squint your eyes, do you see how all the light things like in the clouds kind of merge? or the lights in the bushes uh, on the edge of the pond all kind of merge and it simplifies the form. It simplifies the shape. So we are going to be looking for where is our light source? And we're going to be looking for the value structure. So if I were to paint this, I would, and, or when I paint it, I'm gonna be looking to simplify it to about two, or not two, three or four values. And this is just to start it. It really helps me to jump into it. 
We often make our paintings too complicated in the beginning, but if we can simplify, 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 the detail will come. All right, so where's my light source? What is my value structure? And then a really, really important part of painting clouds is how dark are the darks actually? So if we're looking at the about the shadows underneath the bottoms of these clouds, if we compare them to the bright, bright white over here, it feels like they're really, really dark. And a lot of students will paint these and make them really heavy and paint this really dark and this really white because they're only comparing this to this, this value under the clouds to the light, light value of the clouds. But what we need to do is we need to compare this value to that value, but we also need to compare that value to that value, the shadows in the trees. And look how almost completely black or dark those are. So that really helps us to realize that yes, the bottoms of the clouds are darker than the top right side with, you know, the light is hitting it, but not nearly, not even close to as dark as the darkest darks within there. So by having very, very, very rarely are the darkest darks in the sky, especially when you're painting clouds. They'll feel dark oftentimes, but the darkest darks need to be on the ground. And that is one of the biggest first clues you guys are gonna get about how to make a sky feel like a sky or how to make a cloud feel like a cloud and how to make a tree or a rock feel like a tree or a rock is by sheer, just the shadow darks, the value, the darkest darks within the structure will almost always be darker in the trees or the rocks and lighter within the clouds, okay? Let's look at um, a bunch of photos and see if I'm ever, if that's ever not the case, because it totally can be with storms and different things, but generally, all the darkest darks are in the ground form. Does that make sense, everybody? All right. The other thing, so where's the light source? What's the value structure? And then the third thing, and this really is the name of the class, brushwork, is what is the edge quality, right? We've got some kind of crisp edges in some of these clouds, right? And then we've got some very, very soft edges as well. But even these crisp edges are not as crisp as the edges of some of these trees and like the structure of the building, right? So that's another thing is generally the edges are going to be softer. And you, I mean, this is very obvious, mm -hmm. but it's something that we do forget is the edges will be softer in the cloud structure or in the sky generally, even if it's just a little bit softer than they will in the ground structure and the elements in the ground, on the ground. All right. So we've got, where is my light source? What is the underlying and how can I simplify the value structure, the lights and the darks, and the edge quality of the clouds compared to other elements? Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at as we kind of cruise through a couple and see all the different, well, not all the different, right? a bunch of different types of clouds, right? So already huge difference, midday here, kind of, blue skies, whew, you know, look at that golden light, right? Um, so we'll be painting probably this one next week if you'd like to paint along, or you can be look, looking through your own references for a sunset. All right, so what do we got? Where's my light source? Obviously over here to the left, right? Correct? So everything in here is gonna be affected by that same light source. So it's not only going lighter to darker, it's also going warm to cool, warm to cool. The warmer sides are being hit by the light, the cooler sides are facing away from the light. We also have a lot of different edge quality. Most all of our crisp edges are going to be pretty close. And none of the edges are so, so uh, crisp because there's a bit of a haze in the, in the atmosphere here, right? There's a marine layer or a little bit of haze rolling in. But you got some of the more crisp edges on the grass. And then these rocks 
feel crisp, but they're a little bit soft edged. But then these clouds really get nice and soft edged in some areas, a little more uh, described and refined in other areas, and then smooth transitions um, across. Any questions or comments on that, you guys? And I hope now, you're listening. Now it's snowing here, Michael. Uh-oh, sorry, we sent it away. It's a lot less here now. <laughs> All right, this is a picture uh, we took in Italy after visiting Pompeii, actually, I think, the day, same day we visited Pompeii. Um, and it was funny, right? Like, all these people who live there uh, were just walking past. Nobody was even turning their heads to look at this, um, what I thought was just amazing light show coming across the mountains here, hitting the water. Um, so again, this has some really dark, heavy clouds, but not as dark as here. And if there was anything in the foreground and had shadow, it would be much darker. This one's really nice and easy. Where's my light source, right? It's got literally lines pointing you right to it. Um, and then, yeah, where do you want to use edge quality? You know, crisper edges, getting softer, uh, back to a little crisper right here, the atmosphere and the light is kind of disturbing the uh, edge quality here, or making it a little bit softer. Uh, gets a little crisper, then soft, and then a little bit, you know, and as it goes back into space, it gets, uh, look at the values going from dark to light, going from darker, warmer to lighter and cooler, grayer. Um, yeah. Michael? Yeah. Hi, I was wondering, on that last picture and also on this one, um, how, how do you do the sun rays? Do you wait till after the painting's dry or can you do that while it's still wet? Uh, I wouldn't do it too early on either way. If I was gonna do it while it's still wet, I could um, probably, but I will probably be dragging and disturbing some edge quality. Um, you could just simply, you know, darker paint, lighter paint, darker paint, lighter paint, you know what I mean? and make the rays in there as an illusion. A lot of times I will kind of save some of that towards the end. Um, I can use, you know, transparent white or transparent paint a little bit, you know, using a little bit of medium to thin it down. I also, if you've um, seen, I will take and just wipe areas back away with my, you know, paper towel and can do some of that and then come back in and paint back in a little bit, warm it up if I need to, um, things like that. So yeah, it, it can be done in either, either way. Um, but that is a good question and something maybe we should experiment with a little bit. I'll see if I yeah. can incorporate. I'd like to do that, yeah. Yeah, the fingers of God, you know, they're always so impressive when you see them. Um, yeah, so what's funny is this is the same place. This is sunset and this is sunrise. Um, so, you know, that's kind of funny in Italy where you, when you kind of get places along the um, along the cliffs there, sometimes you can get really nice, both um, lots of good views all throughout the day. Um, I just love the storminess, but here we go. Look at how incredibly dark this has been. You, I did run a filter over this one and did some manipulation, um, you know, just to add to the moodiness because I really wanted this area to really come out. So I darkened a lot of the other areas even more um, just to give it more personality and help tell the story a little bit more. Um, but yeah, this, this cloud is so dark. So that kind of goes against what I just said, but it was done poetically, I guess. Um, you know, whether or not I would actually even paint it that dark, I don't know. Um, I don't even know if I would paint that. I might even crop that out and, you know, zoom in to different elements in this painting. Um, I love the darks and cools and the warmer light. The interesting thing about clouds is they can be semi-transparent or quite transparent, which will allow the light to get into them and bounce around inside of them, which can really make some interesting and crazy effects. This is uh, one of the sunset ones I was actually contemplating doing for next week too, because it, it does begin to incorporate waves and different elements. So this one, and this one, we're taking literally on the same beach. Um, you see the little, uh, 
bump out there that's called uh terrible tilly that's our and that's the same terrible tilly right there that's uh, a lighthouse uh, that you can see from cannon beach uh -oh. i would be interested to see also how you do like that kind of sand with little divots in it without making it look too spotty i'd be curious to see how you do that ah the pressure <laughs> all right me too that'll be fun Oops, I'm just going to keep adding to it. I wonder how I stop. Okay. So there's the Italy scene. This is sunrise. Uh, I'm looking down over the uh, over Tuscany from the hills. Um, I just love when clouds just kind of get spotlit. So where is the light source here? This is almost a tricky one, or it can feel a little bit tricky, but it, it's back ducked behind these hills here. So that's why everything here is in shadow still. The sun hasn't risen up enough to hit any of these, the light, any of these objects here. And it's funny when we look at photos and we think they're so obvious, but yet when we start to paint them, our brain just does funny things and short circuits and like, oh, if these are being lit, I must, I should light these. And all of a sudden our light source gets weird and wonky and everything else. Um, but uh, so it's behind these hills, leaving all this in shadow, hasn't illuminated most of these clouds but a lot so a ray of light has snuck up and it, it hit the back or the undersides of some of these clouds and i just really like this design i like the movement i like the structure i love that it almost has a big s curve in it so that's one i revisit quite often another one from cannibal cannon beach there's terrible tilly again so um i take lots and lots of photos there i have a gallery in cannon beach so um, you know, often when I'm dropping off work or doing shows or whatever else, you get to spend a lot of time there. Um, this is another one where the sun is back here, right? It's got the fingers of God. It's uh, uh, hiding behind these clouds. So you're not really seeing it. Um, and then it's one sun race and I snuck through all this congestion of clouds and illuminated this top lift this cloud and I just love it it's a weird one like done wrong I don't know what it would you know would look pretty weird but um yeah Whew. I think this is Germany or somewhere I feel like I'm giving you guys a um travel slideshow should be the most boring thing but we're looking at the looking at the light and the um the clouds here so First things first, let's look at the darks and the lights and the ground compared to the sky. Even though this is a moody, heavy clouds, right? Stormy, dark clouds, they're nowhere near the darks in the shadows of the ground planes. Even these little bumps of uh, cut grass here are much, much darker than up here. That makes sense? So that helps us to know where our ground is versus our sky, helps to create that separation. It helps to make the clouds feel like even though they're big and dark and heavy, they're not so dark and heavy that they can't float, right? We want our clouds to feel like they can float. Um, this is a fun one because the light source is within the clouds, right? So it's kind of an interesting one, and it's that transparency of the clouds is what's uh, causing the warmth, light. Right? The light is coming through these clouds. We don't even know exactly where it is, somewhere back in there. And then it's leaving the uh, cool of the sky. So I like this one. I've never painted it. I, I look at it often, but I'm not quite sure how it will read. So I need to get a little braver to paint this one. But I always like just a nice, simple landform you know it's it's got a bit of movement a bit of structure but it helps mostly because you know it shows off the sky without interfering too much with it more cannon beach um this this is the same scene as this one just turning the camera a little bit maybe waiting a minute or two and more clouds are getting illuminated there's terrible tilly again so lots and lots of pictures you can even see it's almost a reverse fingers of god where it's casting shadows up into the sky behind those clouds. Uh, this one was um, one of my old cameras used to have this high chroma setting. 
meaning it would punch up the colors, right? And you can tell that makes the Mount, the, the Teton Mountains look a little bit infected here. Um, they're really, really glowing red, but I, it helps, it was helping me at the time to get into the detail and the structure of these clouds, right? All right, Sully, do you mind helping me on this one a little bit? Where is our light source on this one, Sully? Oh boy, um, I think I think it's it's off to the well. I would say the left. This over here. Mm -hmm. It does feel like that a little bit, doesn't it? It's interesting, but if I look at these mountains they look like the lights coming from the right more ah yeah like the shadow structure and then i look within the shadow structure here it does almost feel like over here it's coming more from the straight up behind us mm -hmm. and over here it's kind of behind us to the right so anyways i'm gonna go with behind us to the right because of all the shadows here yeah makes sense yes yeah, so it can be tricky and that's why, you know, that is literally why it's like my first question, because if I start attacking it without knowing, then all of a sudden I could have, you know, light coming from here, I can have light coming from here. And sometimes I'm going to play that up a little bit, um, squinting our eyes again, even though there's some real dark shadows underneath these clouds, they're nowhere near as dark as in the hills, or if we come down even more beyond the band of fog there that's sitting over, I think that's the Snake River in the Tetons Park. Um, these trees, just looking at the heavy, dark weight of those, you know, they're, they're not catching any of the light yet. Um, they're still in shadow. So I think this is sunrise hitting the Tetons. So even though my camera picked up these colors, I would definitely probably subdue some of these colors. Um, they just feel too cartoony and everything. Again, I used the high chroma setting, which can, you know, in sunrise and sunset can make the the camera go a little bit crazy, in my opinion. What so kind of camera do you have? Uh, I mean, when I took this, it was probably one of those old point and shoot. Uh, I don't know which camera. I mostly just use my iPhone almost always. Uh, that's what I was wondering if it was. Yeah. Okay. So this may have been my iPhone, actually, an earlier version of my iPhone. Yeah, I was actually out with a professional photographer. And uh, I took him out like three days because I was painting and he wanted to go out uh, doing photos. And I met him at um, a, uh, a hostel, a youth hostel that I was staying at. And usually when I'm traveling by myself, I try to stay inexpensively and staying in a youth hostel and having a bunk bed is a good way to make yourself get out <laughs> and uh, see nature and be in nature because nobody which wants to sit on their bunk bed all day. Um, but you meet some cool people too. So I met this guy and he had all of his amazing equipment. And uh, I was there with my iPhone and uh, yeah, he was in the end ended up being pretty impressed after he made fun of me for about a day or two um, with what you could do and what I could capture. Um, I don't know. I think this is probably Montana uh, land, a big sky, big clouds. Um, and you'll see a lot of my photos aren't great. They're not really refined. I don't think this would make a great painting, but a lot of times what I'm doing in my photos is I'm just grabbing bits of information. Like I love the high chroma yellow contrasting with everything else is kind of gray. You got a little bit of red in the barns, but even that's a uh, very grayed down, brown down red. Um, and that what I really like though is um, when we think about perspective, right? And we think about the ground perspective, and I'll look for something here a little bit, um, is that big objects will come forward and then they get smaller as they recede into space. So you got the bigger hills and the hills get smaller as they recede into space. The cool thing about clouds is oftentimes they are actually doing the same thing. The large, big clouds are oftentimes going to be highest up. So it's a reverse. So on the ground, the big things are towards the um, bottom of the canvas. And in the sky it's going to be towards the top so big clouds at the top and they get smaller and smaller and smaller as they go towards the horizon line this i literally remember the moment i figured that out and i shouldn't say i figured it out because i was told it by a young uh young painter and she uh 
Yeah, she just explained it to me as far as perspective. And I think I learned it after college or like really discovered that, oh yeah, that's completely logical. We're living in a big dome. So the clouds follow the same perspective. So watch for that a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, big clouds receding to little clouds. And again, you can see the road here. I, I was too lazy to even get out of my car to take this photo, um, it looks like. So I, you know, if I was going to paint this, I would get in there and edit it. Um, I probably wouldn't put a road just like this. It's very distracting. And um, I always like people to think I hiked in somewhere. Um, so I will uh, fudge that a little bit. But I, you know, and I might even just edit it all the way here. I don't need that much ground because this painting is about these big dramatic clouds, this interesting kind of spidering it does as it kind of makes like a almost a wagon wheel effect from the top um yeah the sun is not very obvious and it doesn't even look like it's hitting the the ground plane much at all um might be fun if i was doing this as a painting to maybe bring in a dash of light across there like it was sneaking through the clouds because the light in here is coming down from the top left down in a little bit of light hitting right there and a little bit of light hitting on these trees um so you can look into there and see the shadow and the light so that also just reaffirms what i thought about where the light was coming from top left coming down hitting there so we're constantly looking for clues again the darks in this in the sky structure are not they feel dark and you know thick but they're not anywhere as dark as the ground plane. All right, a couple more. This is sheer chaos. <laughs> this is painting out at the Columbia River Gorge. Um, this is from Manuka. How do you anybody, tackle that? It's a chance to take a workshop with me out there. Super fun, super beautiful. This is the view from their, um, their swimming pool area uh, where I've gone out and painted there a couple times. Um, the women's Vista House or the women's forum and the Vista House would be right over here on the right side. But anyways, sheer chaos, right? I mean, that is just, there's clouds, there's fog, there's sun peeking through in different spots, but we can kind of still, it takes us a little bit longer, but we can still begin to discover like, oh, this is the top, this is the bottom, this is the ground, this is, um, you know, and it's because of the values, right? These dark little, even though they feel like islands floating on these clouds, these little dark spots help us to, our brain to figure out that these are the ground areas and that the sky is up here, um, that this is fog coming down through underneath. Um, this is probably not a painting I would do just because it's, or if I did, I'd have to figure out how to really simplify it because it is, literally chaos to look at right now for me you guys feel that or do you think this would be a nice painting uh yeah with chaos <laughs> I, I would love to paint it <laughs> it has everything dark light uh beautiful soft colors uh yeah. really nice landform um so i would not be uh, daunted by it oh very good i like that if i were to paint it i would like um there's a couple stripes and things like this cloud right here. I would probably actually get rid of it or some kind of just because of the uh, repetition of stripes. Um, yeah, this I, would be a good challenge. Like, what would I change? What would I, you know, like these trees just kind of poking out of the bottom? I would probably either manipulate them, make them a little bigger. Like some of these might be interesting contrast points. If this tree, you know, some of these branches came up a little higher. I'd, maybe in front of the fog or just taking them out. So I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, no, no, no. What I was going to say is what I love about it is it's a gorge caught in one of its most gorgeous moments. And it has fog and it has mountains and it has light and dark. And so, you know, for this, if we were to do a painting like this, or if I were to do a painting of this, I would be thrilled because it is mysterious but concrete uh, and it has enough value contrast all the way through it that it would be, I think, a very interesting painting. Lovely, see, you changed my mind. 
<laughs> it's still chaos, but I would I, I love what you're saying. I, I agree. I you have to compose it differently. I'm curious, like if I would it like zoom in more like this slightly. Yep. You know, drop off some of that sky. Right. Um, these feel like evil eyes to me. <laughs> so yeah. So it's always great when you're looking at something, um, you know, going, okay, I want to paint the gorge, so I'm painting a subject, or do I want to paint, um, or do I want to paint, um, you know, the light and the atmosphere, the warms and the cools, the darks and the lights. There's so many different things, you know, the soft edge versus the crisper edges. There's so much. This painting literally does kind of have it all. But then I would start to go, okay, well, how do I edit? What parts of it don't I like? You know, what parts are just kind of unfortunate? Like, I don't like this green tree poking up here. I don't like the evil eyes. Not that I can't have light up there. I would just probably not make them the same, the same size. Um, and it's just something once I've seen it, I can't unsee it. So, you know, yeah. I would have to just kind of maybe make this a big open band of light here with a little breaking or like I, like I just did, just kind of crop it out maybe. So then I'm always kind of moving around when I'm selecting an image of, you know, how much do I need to tell this story? How little do I need to tell this story? Like, does that actually still tell the story? Not quite as well. It doesn't make it feel as vast and big. But anyways, great. I say that, uh, that um, Barbara, you get to paint that at some point during this class. <laughs> And, and except, except now the bottom part looks like teeth. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, you took exactly. out the eyes, but now there's teeth. <laughs> yeah, are... yeah, look at that mouth. Hey, Michael. Like jack o lantern. Michael, when when I look at this thing, it drives me crazy. It's so, like you said, chaotic. And I like when you give your opinion if it's a good painting to paint or not. I don't see a focal point point. I just see white. Yeah, and I don't know what the I, I really don't know what uh, uh, the artist is trying to would be trying to express here. I imagine that the focal point's gonna be kind of in here because you have the lightest lights with you know next to some darks and uh, you know um, exciting and then a lot of these lines want to kind of lead in towards that. Um, but you could move it around. I mean, that's just it. This is not a painting that is ready to go out of the box. I think if you took this photo and just replicated, it would not make a great painting. I think there's a lot of elements in here that could make a great painting with the proper editing or the right configuring. Um, and the right, it basically comes down to asking the right questions. And, and I appreciate what you said, Susan, but the truth is I can't tell you what makes a good painting and what makes a bad painting. I can just tell you, would I paint it? Would I not paint it? And why? Yeah. Um, I am definitely not the uh, end all be all of uh, <laughs> what makes good art. But um, anyways, I love the cleanness in this one. This is one I almost didn't yeah. add in the group. Um, I don't know if any of you guys ever watched the Simpsons cartoon, but the clouds in the beginning of the Simpsons always look like this. They're flat on the bottom and uh, very rotund on the top. Uh, I just love the simplicity. That's my wife and my daughter walking through this old church. I don't even know what country we're in, um, but I always like this. There's a, I have a whole series of these just very bucolic. Is that the right word? It just makes me want to do singing in the, um, or what is it? The hills are alive with the sound of music or something. Um, anyways, uh, light source is pretty obvious in these with the shadow directly underneath. Um, This is uh, Wyoming as well, just looking the other direction from the Tetons. Um, I like this one because I like my little stop sign in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> um, but I, I just thought these clouds were beautiful. Um, I've never actually painted this scene, but I have put these clouds into other scenes. Um, so a lot of these photos and a lot of the other ones that I, I'm not sharing, I literally am just taking for one element, like, oh, that's that's a funny little thing, this stop sign in the middle of, of literally a field. But, um, you know, that does not a painting make. Um, and maybe the scene isn't interesting enough. It's almost, it might make a nice abstracted landscape, um, you know. Uh, but 
I do like the clouds. I like the colors. I like the really cool purples going to the uh, kind of the quinacridone reds on the way up. So anyways, I'm oftentimes taking photos, <clears throat> um, not knowing exactly, just grabbing one element from them. Uh, this is uh, Savi Island um, outside of Portland. I love the flooded fields. I've, I've done a number of flooded field paintings. Um, and then this is using my sunglasses. I took the photo through my sunglasses. Um, for those of you who've painted with me very long or know me, um, that is a trick I use. I use it as a uh, filter. Um, it makes the blues oftentimes very, very dark and moody. And it kind of helps me to um, get into my more tonalist aspects of painting. This is not a scene I've ever painted. I was so positive when I was taking these photos you know, getting my feet all muddy and wet and stuff that I was going to just rush home and make these big, huge paintings of this because I love the simplicity, but yet there's enough interest. And I don't know, I, I was so thrilled when I was out there, but for some reason, it, I lost it a little bit in translation, getting it home. Um, I've lost the thrill of it. But anyways, there's still some really nice aspects. And maybe it would be, you know, maybe it's not this great big grand vista scene. Maybe you know, maybe it's something like this it would be a little more interesting, um, but then it's not about the sky anymore. Um, so looking through, you know, this could definitely be a very moody totalist painting. Wow. But I don't know. What do you guys think? You guys think as a this could be a nice big painting at some point? I love it. Love it's it, but I love tonalist. I think it's beautiful. That's true. Yeah, I love tonalism too. It, you can it make looks, it vertical. It reminds me of more of a... Yeah, it looks it looks <clears throat> so balanced. And, That's what I'm wondering. I think that yeah. might be it. it. Might be like maybe I take this tree and move him to here and mm -hmm. create a, a tree space tree big space bunch of trees. Or yeah, it's weird that these two trees equals all of these trees, but it really does. It's almost too balanced. So maybe even just taking this tree out. What if you split it vertically and did the left half vertically? I like that too. Kind of like split up the middle here. Yeah, yeah or maybe mm -hmm. to the left a little, but just make it a vertical painting. Mm -hmm. Then you still have the sky. Like right that. There. Yeah. Yeah, that could be that that could be a good one. You're right. Kind of like that. <coughs> I like it better the other way. B great, big, and open. Yeah. Or what I could even because <laughs> it has that curve sort of feeling. Right. The bottom. Anyways, <laughs> I'm not going to paint it today, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that one has options, and it's fun to revisit. It was neat um, having this excuse to literally look through 12 years of photos, and. Um, I'm going to go a little bit faster, but what I want you to look at again is where's my light source? Are the bottoms of my clouds or the shadow structure of the clouds as dark as underneath? They're almost as dark as the mountains, but they're definitely not as dark as the shadows in the trees. And if there was something, oh, well, let's look here. Uh, the shadows in here, you know, are a little bit darker. Um, and then the edge quality, a little crisper on the bottom, a lot wispier and uh, diffuse on the top. So we're so, going to go a little bit quicker. Tell me to stop if you see one. So, you like so Michael, so Michael, uh, uh, this was a good, uh, I mean, I, I mean, I, I guess it, it's obvious in some ways that the light source seems to be coming from the left side in that, you know, behind that one cloud where it's the brighter white. But uh, this is where I get really confused because if I look, you know, the, on the other side of this big primary puffy cloud, there looks to be light over on that side too. So I'm sort of assuming, is, is that when you're, um, I mean, because the light is, is on both sides of the cloud and on the top, and yes, it's a little bit brighter on the left-hand side, I guess. So, so that yeah, this this would be confusing as far as how I would get light out on the ground. Um, I, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look to me like the ground is being hit by light. 
it's just the soft radiant light from the you know i don't think any there's any direct light on the ground really um, no it's all it's all trapped right in that one left side i believe so and i actually I think don't think that the light's coming from the left i think it's coming from above to the right just slightly well the, yeah. so mm -hmm. so yeah so the okay so the light's coming from the above to the right from the right. right ones yeah they're getting hit what yeah so that that super bright area right how here. does it yeah 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 how does it get see that's a, that's a puzzling part because that's the brightest part right yeah i think it it's is. reflected light isn't it reflected light and there's a rain cloud there's rain right in the middle of the photo you see the rain how the mountains are all yeah kind of yeah it's raining there yeah. And then, and the light reflects up in within the clouds, like from behind. It's coming from the top right, and so it's hitting that center back here on the left that you're talking about. I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more than it well, is I, on the I front think, yeah, of I, the thundercloud. I think that the light is coming down and hitting that. Um, it's also probably a little brighter because it's so solid; it's not diffused. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know what I would probably do. Um, and this goes back to one of my other little mottos is when in doubt, take it out. Um, like, would I maybe just make it not so bright? Maybe bring it in line more with what's going on over here. If I can't explain it or it's weird and it's not really helping when in doubt, take it out. If it's not hurting, it's help. If it's not helping, it's hurting. Um, I think I might think like that a little bit. But yes, or it almost kind of make that the focus somehow. But uh, this, for me, kind of feels more like it wants to be kind of the big star of the show. Yeah. It's in the right placement. It's got the rain coming underneath. It's got a lot of interesting things. All right. Sunlight behind the clouds. I love my backlit everything. Backlit clouds, everything. Um, <laughs> fingers of God. Uh, I'm not sure why it's purple. If you know, if I put a filter on it, um, I'm always playing around with the different filters and settings. And then, um, you know, in the evenings, I will pull up my photos and play with them on different editing software and stuff. So on this one, I probably just, you know, was trying to pull out different aspects of it. Um, sometimes the different filters or it could have been shot through sunglasses as well. Um, a lot of times shooting the sky through photo through sunglasses allows it to actually look into the light. Otherwise, it just bleaches out, right? Like if I didn't have my sunglasses, I bet you this whole area would just be big white spot. Oh, here it is. You're right, Michelle. I edited it kind of that way you were talking about. Um, it's really pretty. Yeah, this is uh, seven miles south of Cannon Beach, um, a place called Falcon Cove or Arch Cape. Um, I take lots of pictures of this tree. I've painted it a number of times. Um, and uh, I take a lot of photos on this beach. It's uh, not a private beach because we don't have private beaches in Oregon, but there's only one access point that's even reasonable. Um, so there's oftentimes nobody, literally nobody down there. So it's kind of a cool little beach. Um, the only thing I don't like, and one of the reasons I actually grabbed this is because of a weird tangent. And I wanted to have you guys help me find it. Um, and see what I would do differently. All right, so do you guys see this cloud here, this nice little triangle? And you see how it wants to sit right on top of that tree? That makes me uncomfortable. I, um, I would rather it either goes up higher or makes a different shape, or it comes down behind the tree. But having it so close and such a line on top of it, it almost feels like this cloud and this tree are aware of each other and that this cloud either doesn't want to touch the tree or it's just barely resting on top of the tree. So I'm always looking for things like that, weird tangents where, and it also follows the angle of the tree. It's pretty cool. It's cool, but I would, I would change it. So it's not, it's weird. And it happens all the time in <laughs> photos. Um, you know, I've, you'll see clouds sometimes that look like they're just literally climbing over the top of a mountain, like they have the do same dome shape as the mountain. Um, it works sometimes in photos, but it's weird in um, in paintings. Uh, just yeah. yeah just now you pointed out, I can't not see it. 
So would you just take it out? You I would, would just take I would just take out that cloud, yeah. And and what about the one on the right that sort of looks like um Snoopy or something? Right, right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is so, thing, like, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't look it, yeah. I mean, again, in photos we will let things slide, but in a in a painting with all these nice shapes and everything else being so interesting, this looks so fake. Right. Right. It looks like somebody just got lazy and just half built well, my eye went right to it totally yeah right it's and that's probably why i haven't <laughs> ever painted this scene is those two things are so odd um so yeah you know it's just a matter of giving yourself permission and observing before you start painting and not just accepting everything use that artistic license and begin to question everything this is you know a horrible uh, ground plane but really an interesting sky it looks like this is a drive-by you know, photo of just, oh, look at that sky. Take, put the camera against the glass and hope for the best. Um, you can tell because the ground is all blurry as I'm going flying by it, but the clouds, luckily caught the clouds. So I like this sky a lot, even though this is probably out in Eastern Oregon somewhere, it looks like, you know, high desert. I could definitely see the sky with haystack rock or some waves or an ocean or, you know, some trees, a forest, a marsh, whatever it is, I, you know, so I'm always just constantly grabbing touches of uh, mm -hmm. touches of things. Uh, this looks like it's related to that other painting that we were just analyzing with the really bright clouds. Michael, yep. on that last one uh, with the field there, I mean, I think I love those kinds of paintings with the bright color down below and the grays. Would you feel compelled to add a path into that? Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily need it, um, but I probably would, but that's, you know, as you said, compelled, you might have as well just said compulsion. Uh, <laughs> I border on compulsion with my uh, need to lead the eye into a painting. Um, but no, I, I, I don't think you would need it. And if you did, it could be, see this little line here with the green? Just so subtle. You don't need a path. Like, you don't need to pretend that a person's walked through it, but or there is almost this. So I would almost just take this little bit of green and carry it, you know, a little bit. And it's a, it's a path for the eye. It doesn't need to be a path to necessarily walk on. Um, I'm thinking this is like canola plants, canola oil plants. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, nobody wants to walk through that anyways. That stuff will just grab you and wrap you up. Um, but anyways, it is pretty. Um, and then the interesting thing here, Michelle, is that the ground is not being hit by uh, any strong light. Um, you know, and then you have to decide, do I want to pretend that some of the light has snuck through and hit a little bit? Like, would it be, or would that be too much? Would that be, you know, if this was hit by light, it would be the most yellow, intense color. So lots of choices. Uh, view from cabin. Um, I just really like the soft, diffuse light, um, the really dramatic darks and lights. Um, yeah, I grabbed this one because again, it's just out of a car, um, or no, this is out of a train. I can see the uh, reflection of the back side of the train car I'm in. Um, you know, and you got the railings here, you've got these wind turbines. You know, there's beautiful things in here. I love, these trees leading back. I love soft rolling hills. It's got the yellow that we were just talking about, the canola, nice clouds. And so this would just come down to a lot of decision making. What stays, what leaves, you know, and I have nothing against wind turbines or anything like that. Um, you know, they could make, they could be great in a painting, I imagine. I just never done it. Um, I would probably personally take them out. I'd definitely take out this uh, big cement slab here. I uh, would definitely not paint in these random reflections. Um, probably zoom in a little bit. I would probably take this sky and shrink it down so that it fit into the sky here because I don't want all that information on the left. So I'd probably just make that sky a little bit smaller so that it all fits because I like that motion. I like that movement. All right. This one, I, I, I was looking for an example of painting the sky in the reflection. And I apologize, this is the best one that I found. Um, 
where the reflection, the sky in the reflection becomes more of the subject. Um, I have a painting that I did a long time ago that actually uh, won some awards and stuff that it was literally just uh, big clouds reflecting with a bunch of canoes around it. Um, but the canoes were at the very, very, very top of the scene. And the whole 90% of it was just, or 80% of it was just these crazy clouds reflecting in the water. Um, so anyways, I like looking for that. I like, okay, what's the obvious scene? Okay, take a couple photos of that. What's, you know, what's less obvious? What, um, yeah, what could be interesting? What could make this slightly more poetic or interesting or a little bit different than people have seen? Um, got some photos that my wife takes. I'm pretty lucky whenever I go out, my wife, daughter, and I are all taking photos. And so sometimes I don't catch it, but one of them does. Um, this is just a dramatic sky. And I thought it was really interesting, this little line that comes out whether or not I would paint that in or maybe I would even really play it up I don't know I also like this little seagull just hanging out down here um but uh anyway it's just not you know not an exact scene now there's somebody even taking a I think that looks like my mother-in-law over there taking a photo um this is Laos uh at first I thought that was a bird just now but that's just a log jam um, nice elements. Got this uh, net fisherman down here. I would probably take him and move him so he's not so far to the edge of my canvas. You know, I might bring him in so he's um, a little more of a focal point. Um, I painted this one in plain air. I've never painted it again. That's the Mekong River. I'm just going to, again, keep going quickly, but uh, just looking for the big elements. Where's my light source? The lights and the darks. Um, red rocks outside of Vegas, I think. Um, I just loved the, how it literally looked like these clouds hit the back and almost exploded up. Here, I really like the dappling of the light. Um, I think one of you guys in the last class was talking about that. Um, this is um, Highway 99 out way towards the coast, and you get these beautiful little rolling hills, and I think there's two photos of this. Um, I just really like that, where it almost, you know, it's kind of like, where's my focal point? Well, it's a spotlight literally there. You know, it's not great. There's nothing here. I would probably change the colors to be a little more interesting, maybe. Um, maybe I would make that barn being hit by the light, or, you know, make something that's being hit by the light be interesting. Um, but I like that. Uh, just the clouds basically and how they affect nature and really, really disrupt and really soften the edges. So you got the darks going back towards the lights. Um, and I really like this. I mean, the focal point is so beautifully obvious because it's just these little breaks and all the lines kind of leading into it. Um, but anyways, I just like when the, you know, when the clouds completely obscure things and really like, you can't tell where this mountain and the clouds begin or end. And that's really interesting to me. And even all the way up to here. Where was that? Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba, somewhere along the Rocky Mountains, I think probably maybe in Canada, maybe on the way to Banff for Jasper. Um, so some of these, you know, I kind of like the clouds. They're interesting, but I really like, unfortunately, there's not a good light hitting this, but I do like the design structure of the ground form. So I was thinking, oh, I could use this, add a, you know, maybe make the clouds a little more interesting. I like just the sense of movement. I've always been a sucker for rolling rural farm hills. Um, another one of just complete, obs like just the clouds and everything just obscuring and destroying everything but in a weird and beautiful and poetic way this is another one I was like oh man if I was brave I would paint this really big like four feet or six feet and just really lean into it but I've never been quite brave enough but I sure thought it was beyond amazing when I was driving through it um Italy so again design 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 lights and darks unfortunately the vines weren't growing in here I grabbed um, because 
you know, who's not going to take a photo of this crazy cloud, right? This gigantic jellyfish of an atomic bomb of a cloud. Um, but I'm not going to paint it, probably. There are artists that can and do. Um, but I, for one, I don't sell paintings where we see these kind of clouds very often. Um, for two, I, I, it's just too weird. It's too beautiful, but it literally looks like a UFO. It literally looks like a jellyfish. It literally looks like an atomic bomb. Um, but it's so it's like when things are just weird, I, I will take the photo, but I most likely am not going to paint that. I might even use the color scheme from it. Linda, do you see clouds like this out where you live? Yeah, I bet. Yes, yes, I do a lot. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I mean, I've seen thunderheads kind of like that and stuff, but thunderheads are we see them more often. I don't even know what this formation is. Um, this is just about, what's that? Mothership. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This one, I just, I loved the minimalism of it. I just thought there was something really beautiful and special. Um, these are the, uh, I would like to do more paintings like this. I mean, I just love, I mean, even that, just that little rim lighting of the clouds. So beautiful. Um, this is another one where I'm like, oh, this would be so nice big. But I'm kind of scared in that I know the audience for this is small, probably. People want, you know, more going on, more interest, but I sure like it. So anyways, sky, sky clouds, minimalism. Uh, this is another one of those. Yes. Just, I was out in a canoe and the clouds did this up in um, central Oregon. and. Uh, it was almost scary to be out on this little boat with these really weird, 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 hyper crazy clouds. There was fires going on over on the other side of the mountain. So it just made these crazy, it did end up becoming a super little wild storm that tore our tents and stuff apart. But um, anyways, uh, again, this is just a place to go hiking. So just taking photos, just constantly taking photos of little elements, little pieces. Like I, I don't like just this floating patch of clouds. I wouldn't paint them like that but I like a lot of the different elements that are in here Same that was dandel a dandelion cloud it looked just like a dandelion exploding and blowing across the yeah, sky you're right yeah all the little bits <laughs> floating away yeah yeah you're right yeah. that's funny um yeah and again just grabbing elements there's you know I would have to change some of this around it has weird shapes and stuff but uh I love the light and the trans you know as it morphs um, yeah, out of the car again. So I'm constantly, constantly, constantly. I love these clouds, but I hate this. <laughs> I don't know we've been wearing <laughs> that in here. Uh, but you know, I'm not. I'm, there's painters that do great uh, job and have made their whole career painting industrial parks and things like that. Um, I'm not that guy. Uh, but I sure do love these clouds. Like when I refound this photo yesterday, I was like, oh, good, there it is. I, you know, I knew I had taken it, and so it was nice to re-grab it. Um, these clouds are almost too perfect. I mean, it looks like a like an animation, like a computer animation movie clouds. But uh, I sure Maxfield think they'll be Parish. Fun. What's that? Maxfield Parish. Cloud. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even with the Maxfield Parish blue up there, look at that. Yeah. So that's the one I need to. Which uh, would you try and, Michael? Would you try and simplify that one? The clouds or the bottom? Yeah. Well, no, forget the bottom. <laughs> just, yeah, I would just put like clouds. Those, I would probably put like this bottom with these clouds. Oh, and yeah, there you go. I, I would probably want to simplify because I mean, oh, look at those clouds. With the little baby clouds back there. Great example of uh, big clouds going back to little clouds as they recede into space. This one has a lot of good perspective rules. I should remember this as a tool for teaching perspective. Mm. Yeah, I would probably either merge these, like squint your eyes at the, all these little clouds because you see they're just dot, 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 dot. Squint your eyes and see how the bottoms of them just kind of want to become like a line. I would probably play that up mm. and probably simplify uh, a little bit. Okay. But, that makes more yeah, sense. These two um, are really mimics of each other. And this one really looks like a, 
if Nike made a boot. Like that literally looks like the wing of Nike and a boot. <laughs> Look at that sole. Or those rubber, those little plastic oh, wing ducks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah With maybe. little wings. So maybe even taking that cloud out would allow for a little bit of a break of, you know, to add some blue and space in there. Yeah, lots of questions, but gosh, I mean, structurally, look at it, just how gorgeous these are. Um, sunsets. Uh, I grabbed some of these for you guys. Um, you'd have to straighten out the horizon, the horizon line and everything. Um, these are just drive by. This is a, a field that's only probably two or three miles from my house. And uh, I love the oak tree sitting out in there and everything else. So anyways, I just grabbed a couple uh, more Cannon Beach. This is a Laurel Vineyard where they have a whole bunch of my paintings there. If you ever get a chance to go, A-L-L-O-R-O. -O -O. Great, great wine. Beautiful, beautiful tasting room. This is the old tasting room over here. And now I'm standing in the new tasting room. But I just uh, love, and I'm actually going there tomorrow. Uh, what's, to do, what's the name so, of it? Aloro, A-L-L-O-R-O. -L -L it's one of the best vineyards in Oregon, in my opinion. A -L -L. A-L-L-O-R-O. -O. Um, but yeah, I'm actually taking some um, new gallery people from California up there tomorrow to go show off and see mm. if we can work together. Um, Good luck. But anyways, I love these top lit clouds. I just thought they were quite interesting and beautiful. Not a good photo. It's even blurry and stuff. But I, I got enough. Like maybe I would use some of this information, right? Um, you could see this working, you know, over a coastal scene, um, you know, or I could just, I have so many photos from Alorox because I've been there so many times that I could, you know, make this more interesting, whatever, if I wanted to do that. Uh, here's another one that's just not a good photo. But I really, really loved this color combination that was going on out there. Um, haven't used it, but I, I just thought, you know, maybe I would. Um, same thing here. And this one's a little more complete. I would probably uh, get rid of some of the fence posts and everything else. Um, floating pink clouds are kind of my thing lately, I guess. So. This was one I went out and playing it painted plain air and it was kind of fun before I got out there. It was just gray skies and I didn't actually know that it was going to light up so nicely and interestingly. Lots of sunsets, lots of sunsets, lots of sunsets. This was an interesting one in that it, uh, you know, change it here. So if we go to adjustments, I can come in and brighten it up. So, you know, if your photo is really dark, a lot of times you can, um, you can do some saving and stuff by just kind of coming back in and lightening up areas and stuff. Um, yeah. How do I stop this? Cancel. Just interesting clouds and colors. This, I loved the colors and the interesting thing, but it's a bad design with this kind of big shape in the middle. So I definitely want to figure out, maybe I would take out all of these pink clouds on this side so that it's just kind of a big motion like this. Um, but I like the uh, idea. I like the light. I like the color as it's hitting the ground. Um, so anyways, lots of times I'm just grabbing photos for whatever reason. Crazy cloud formations, um, Vietnam there. Oh, uh, there's that one again with the pink clouds. This one I wanted to show you because beautiful clouds, beautiful colors, but a really weird mix of shapes, right? And they're kind of all broken up. So this one, I would definitely want to be doing some designing, merging and things. I would not paint this as it is. It's just too weird broken and uh everything else but i even like i like the ground area and i like the colors it's just be aware that just because it's beautiful colors and you know cool idea or a cool thing does not make a great photo i uh, just thought that cloud was nice da, 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 da. more top lit clouds um i think i say i think my daughter is hiking right there yep hiking away but I just love those. Um, I love when the light again is getting into those clouds and bouncing around within them. All right, I think we got a good, I think we're almost done here. 
um, just super simple foreground. Um, this is one I may think about when we're doing um, trees. I just like the variety of shapes and forms and I love the silhouette. And then I can come in and lighten up a little bit of uh, the trees to bring in form. Um, this is using the sun as a uh, framing for the you know main object. I just always thought this was kind of a, feels powerful, feels meaningful. Um, again, just on, on the bridge going from Washington to Portland, or this is actually entering into Portland, I think. It's, you know, I can't stop and take a photo. So I'm often trying to snap a shot as I drive and not crash into anybody. Um, so you just put my camera against the window and hope for the best. Um, and I actually like this one, it's blurry. You know, it's not a good photo. It's not gonna win any photo awards, but I like the fact that it has a sense of design and clouds. This actually might be a fun one to paint because um, it's just darks and lights, you know, and cools with a little bit of warm and some structure and then deciding if we wanna move these clouds around at all. This is literally my street where I live. This is the view from our mailbox. But I just saw these clouds and, you know, we always have our phones on us. So feel free, you know, take a photo. I could totally see, again, putting this, a coast, a beach at the bottom of this, an ocean, uh, you know, whatever I want. Because I, I, I personally don't paint suburbia very often. Um, you know, there are painters that do and do great. Uh, but I would want to take this element and probably put it somewhere else. Say, hey, Michael, Michael, just for FYI, that um, spaceship cloud, it's a reticular cloud. Reticular, a reticulous cloud. Reticular. <laughs> it's a ridiculous. All right. Yeah. Ridiculous. Oh, oh, here's uh, I like a Harry, one is purple Harry earlier. Potter thing. Reticular cloud. That's yeah, a good name for it. Sounds like um, circular kind of. So Sometimes yeah, it's like a Harry Potter spell. Um, this is one that I've used in other paintings as well. Um, this color combination kind of slowly moving up across. I really like the transition. Um, that was a photo I took in between two big, huge uh, buildings at the edge of a uh, city in Brazil. And uh, yeah, just driving again. Look at it horrible. You know, you wouldn't, I would never paint this with the road and the cars and everything else. But there's some interesting things going on and what gorgeous, gorgeous blues up here. That was a, that's one for you, Linda. Again, looks like uh, kind of with the different clouds and different structures we get, you know, in the high deserts of Oregon or, uh, you know, other areas, they just get such different clouds. So this one, I could maybe put it and put, you know, put, Haystack Rock and put the coast there, but I think I would probably get myself in trouble. I think it definitely feels like a deserty cloud formation. It is. <laughs> it's full of weeds and and uh, the, the is this your painting. This, this is probably this is my photos. this is my photographs of mountain in the back of my house. <laughs> good, That's good. It. I was wondering. And, and, I'm like, I literally am looking at this like I don't recognize this at all so i, I recognize that mountain well <laughs> and now it the field is full of uh grass and weeds and flowers yellow flowers coming up galore we're all sneezing here oh man all right well i think that is enough of that uh lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of clouds um and uh so let's go ahead and take a break from all of that and uh, normally we wouldn't uh, go over photos for this long, but did that help? Was that useful, you guys, with seeing where's the light source, what's the underlying value structure, and then looking to hard, soft edges, and where do they lie within the landscape and the skyscape of the painting? Yes, very helpful. Yeah. I very learned cool. to edit. I learned to look. I learned to um, not just paint, but just to make sure I know why I'm painting it and what I'm painting. And that you can change it. If it's yeah. not working, if it's not readable, if it's confusing, if it's confusing to you and you're looking at the photo, then it's most likely going to be doubly confusing to the viewer looking at your painting of the photo that you didn't understand. 
Um, so yeah, that's all really important. All right, great. Well, let's take a let's take about a 10 minute break. We haven't taken any breaks yet. Um, okay. And uh, 